Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Ahlan wa sahlan. Welcome to this video, guys. My name is Liaqad Zaman. Hope you guys are having a fantastic day. Right, so this series is dedicated to helping you guys to be able to learn du'as and understand their translation. This is a bit of a long du'a. I put in two lines, as you can see. But it's a very, very important du'a to recite. So, let's have a go at this then. So, Allahumma. So, first of all, I'm going to write the translation of this. So, what I'll do is, I'll just quickly do the translation so you guys can see on the screen then. So, O oh Allah, Allahumma, inni, indeed I, a'udhu, seek protection, bika, with you, min, from, stress, alham, or anxiety, wa, and, sadness, alhuzn, wa, and, incapability, ajz, incapacity, incapability, ajz, wa, and, al-kasal, laziness, Wa and miserliness al bukhl wa and cowardice al juban wa and heavy debt dala dal ad-dain dala ad-dain wa and qahar al rijal yeah qahar overpowering of men overpowering of men so let's do the tarkib let's break down this sentence then okay so let's see how we can do this Allahumma ya Allah ya Allah so this is munada munada inni this is harf mushabbaha bil fi'l harf mushabbaha bil fi'l plus the ism and a'udhu this is fi'l mudhari' and bika is jar and ka is majroor. The fail plus the file over there. Jar majroor, mutalik to the fail in the file. And then min is jar. And then alham is majroor. And jar majroor again, mutalik to. And wow is ataf. Huzan is ma'tuf onto. Ma'tuf unto alham. Okay, so this is the first one. Wow is ataf and is ma'tuf. Ajaz is ma'tuf onto two. Wow is ataf. Kassel is ma'tuf number three. They're all connected to that. And then wow is ataf. This is ma'tuf. Again, this would be. Now, how am I going to do this? So I'll do. Do a bit of a cheat here. Okay, wow is ataf. All of these are ma'tufs. And wow ataf ma. Now this is mudaf. Plus the mudaf ilayhi. And then all that becomes ma'tuf. So this is ma'tuf number four, ma'tuf number five, ma'tuf number six, ataf, and then mudaf, mudaf ilayhi becomes ma'tuf number seven. And all of these, all back there. So it looks a bit messy on the screen, but basically that's what this is, the tarkib of all of this is. Now, let's have a breakdown of what is this hadith actually talking about. So first of all, if you look at the hadith, you've got six or seven parts to this. You've got hum, you've got huzn, ajaz, kasal, you've got bukhl, juban, so these are seven things which affect a person in their life and especially when it comes to practicing right, so if anyone has these things then this is definitely going to be something which is going to affect their life that's why it's very important for a person to actually have some sort of a protection from these things right so you want to protect yourself 
And the only way you can protect yourself is you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect you. So the first thing is stress. Okay, so stress, this is the first thing which affects human life. If you are stressed about something, if you're going through anxiety, if you keep worrying about what's going to happen, what's this, what's that, then it's going to definitely have an impact on your practicing Islam. right? Because you need to have a clear mind when you're practicing Islam. Stress doesn't really help. Number two is some people, they worry about the past. Something that's happened in the past and they're sad about it and they're just crying, sulking, mourning over something which, you know, it's time to move on now. That's the issue. Now, we all have problems in our life. We all need to express our sadness, but to carry on forever in this state isn't a good thing. This is going to definitely have an impact right? because when you're sad, it has an effect on how you behave with other people. It has an effect on your health, on your sleep. All right, so you want to remember you seek protection from that. Number three is incapability. Okay, so incapability, ajas you call this, ajas. Ajas is something that you also want protection from because if you are incapable of doing certain things, if you are not able to do certain things, then that what that basically means is in life, you're gonna have you're gonna you're gonna struggle a lot. Yeah. So, you know, weakness, incapability, you can't go and speak the truth. You can't go and stop people from doing what's wrong. You can't stand up and when it's time to pray salat, go and tell people you have to pray salat, etc. etc. That's the thing you have to be very, very careful. You want you want the courage to be able to stand up for Allah's religion. So incapacity again is something you don't want because Lots of bad things happen in society just because there's some people out there who don't have the strength to be able to do anything. Kasal, laziness. To be lazy is very bad. Okay, why is laziness very bad? Because laziness wastes time. So in your day, you have 24 hours in the day. And if you're lazy, you can end up wasting 8 hours in the day, 10 hours in the day, literally doing nothing. And this is unfortunately something which many of us suffer from. Some of us might be lazy in our prayer times. Some of us may be lazy in going and earning a living. Some of us are lazy in studying. Some of us may be lazy in even helping other people as well. Right. So again, this is one of Shaitan's tricks. He wants to make you lazy. May Allah save us. Number five is Bukhul, is being miserly, stingy, like they say. Stingy, miserly is also another bad thing as well. Because if you have money, and you don't spend it in the places that you're supposed to spend it, and you just hoard it, and you're not using it properly, then therefore that money now is becoming a means for you stopping other people from doing good things as well. So money needs to be spent. Spend it on yourself, spend it on the needy, the poor, your family. All these things are things you have to spend on. And if you're just hoarding the money away, again, this is causing lots of problems. Number six is juban, which is um, being a coward. Yeah, so this is similarly with Ajaz. Ajaz is incapable. You might not be a coward, but you're just incapable of doing it. But Juban is actually being a coward. Right? You're a coward of stopping something bad from happening, etc. Standing up for the truth. Number six. Number seven. Uh, okay, so actually, oh, I've got the numbers wrong. So this is, so this should be, have been one over here. This is actually one, yeah. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so you got eight over here. So number seven. What's number seven? Number seven is uh, having overpowering debts. So debts can actually render a person incapable of doing so many things in life. Because of debts, you can't go and you can't spend money on your family. Because of debts, you know, you can't go and help the community because you have to worry about earning so much to pay off the creditors, right? So again, debt is another bad thing. Overpowering debt, all of us have debts some way or the other, but overpowering debt is what a debt that makes you into almost like a slave. You just spend your whole day, whole night worrying, concerned, you know, trying to pay off the debts. And number eight is Qahr al-Rijal, overpowering men. Yeah, so... People overpowering you. Yeah, so this is it can be oppression, this can be in so many forms. Overpowering other people. So other people overpower you, they dominate you, they control you. All of these things you have to seek protection from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Again, 
if you look in the Quran as well, and if you look at the stories of the prophets, you can see examples of these things in people's lives. And prophets obviously had none of these. The prophets of Allah were pure from all of these, but the people had these things as well. And like I said, if you actually analyze each one, each and every single one of these is strongly connected to making a person um, weak in their religion, yeah, stopping them from being the perfect Muslim that you want to be, the perfect believer that you want to be. Right, so may Allah protect us from all these things, from stress, from huzn, from sadness, ajas, so that sadness which incapacitates us, the ajas, kasal, laziness, bukhal, which is miserly, stingy, juban, which is being a coward, dain, having overpowering debts, and qahri rijal, people that take over us, bully us, overpower us, you know, incapacitate us. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from all of these and make us, give us the attributes and qualities of our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam who was free of all these things, even though he would tell the Sahaba radiallahu anhum to actually uh, read this. Now, an interesting thing about this hadith, Anas radiallahu anhu, Anas radiallahu anhu is the companion, uh, Anas bin Malik radiallahu anhu, he actually says, that he was with the Prophet ﷺ on the mount and he would hear the Prophet ﷺ repeating this dua frequently when they were on the way to Khaybar. And so imagine, this is a very uh, powerful dua, something which the Prophet ﷺ used to recite time and time and they actually call this dua the dua that will wipe out your debts. The dua that will wipe out your debts. This is why there's actually another hadith by Abu Sa'id al-Khudari Abu Sa'id al-Khudri hadith, where the Prophet ﷺ, he actually says, he says that a man came to the Prophet ﷺ and he said that I have a lot of anxiety and stress that has taken over my mind. The Prophet ﷺ said, shall I not teach you some words that if you say them, Allah will remove all of this and will, will, will pay off your debts? The Sahabi said, this man said, oh yes, O Messenger of Allah. He said, in the morning, every morning, and every evening say this dua Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min al-hammi wal-huzn wal-ajz wal-kasal wal-bukhul wal-jubun wal-dhal'ad-dayn wal-qahri rijal and the man said when I started reading it Allah removed all of my stress and Allah paid off my debt for me as well now you imagine Allah paid off the debt this powerful dua so Zakumullah khair for watching this guys I hope you guys enjoyed this if you have any questions please leave them in the comments below and thank you to all my patrons, you beautiful people who support my channel on a monthly basis. If any of you guys want to support my channel, help the work that I do, please consider it. It means a lot to me. You can check out the details in the description below. I'll see you guys next time. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.